customer state's not sure if line locks are working correctly. Alright, after confirming that uh, line lock does indeed work, now we need to uh, take some measurements of the wheels, front and back, so that after we put the lowering springs on, we can compare what we had before and uh, where we end up. So, got my pen, got the tape measure, and we're going to go ahead and take some measurements. All right, now we've got our initial measurements, so we can go ahead and do an alignment check, and then we'll install our springs and check the alignment again, and we'll measure the, our new distances between the fender and the floor, and the top of the tire on the floor, and we'll see how far it actually lowered the car. All right, so we've got our measurements and we've done our alignment. So using these two, using this data, we should be able to uh, compare pretty easily um, how, how it looked before and how it's gonna look after we're done. So the next step is going to be to move the wheels, install the springs. Once we get everything back together, we'll take measurements again. Ooh, stickers. Putting this lowering kit on is a bit of a challenge. The front springs are just McPherson struts, not a big deal. The rear springs are a bit of a chore to get into these IFS systems, but you can sneak them in with the help of a couple people and some pry bars and taking out a few nuts and bolts. So now my New bump stops are changed out. I'm putting my new iBox springs in the back. Now it'll be time to put our front struts back in the front. And then we can put this thing on the ladder rack and see how much of a change it made. Old spring. New spring. Let's see what it does. Oh, this is gonna suck. I just made that look easy because I didn't put my insulator in. Maybe a little harder with that on there.
So my front camber's even, my front caster's even. My front toe's way out. My right rear camber's way out. And my rear toes are towed in pretty badly. So I'm gonna fix that right rear camber, mash it up to the left rear, set my toe. And that'll be that. Get it done. So it went, let's pull it in a little bit. Lock them down, I like it. All right, well, now that we have a completed alignment and we've completed our lowering, um, we're gonna take some measurements and see where the car sits. We left the car sit for a couple days because when you install new springs, uh, they tend to settle a little bit. So once you first install them, leave it for a couple days, it'll settle to a little bit lower of a value. So um, we'll be able to get a better estimate of exactly where the car sits now. So. Uh, I've got my tape measure, got paper and pen, and we're going to go ahead and take some measurements. Alright, well we've got all the measurements we need and uh, we did in fact lower the car. So in the front we got about an inch and a half and a little bit more than that in the rear. Uh, what's kind of interesting is the, t the value of the ground to the top of the tire uh, is different relative to the fender now because the tires are up further in the car. So um, for example in the back the tire actually is further up into the car than is our value for the fender. So um, something to keep in mind when you're lowering your car. Uh, make sure you have clearances. So after completing the alignment for this car uh, we're going to take it for a test drive and make sure that everything still everything still functions as it should um, and make sure that uh, this car is good to ship to customer. you got to be careful of when you're lowering your car is uh, sacrificing ride quality when you go lower and that's something we look for when we're testing out to make sure that everything is satisfactory so we want to put it through a few turns over a few bumps make sure that everything looks good everything feels good and so far I'm not noticing any sacrifice in ride quality whatsoever, so that makes us really happy.
There's absolutely no noises or jostling or rubbing of any sort going on and uh, the ride is just as smooth as before. One of the things I was talking with Austin about before we lowered this car is you know all the horsepower it makes and it's a it's a modern day race car yet in here we have a beautiful uh, screen we have air conditioning heated seats cooled seats uh, really can't get much better for a uh, car that will destroy just about anything out there Well, that's it. We're back at the shop. A uh, customer had a vibration in the rear that we've since taken away with four new tires, or two new tires. We had a uh, test of the line lock, and that does work correctly. And we lowered it almost two inches, 1.8 inches or something around there. And we're able to lower the car without sacrificing any sort of Drivability. I mean, this thing is perfectly comfortable to use as a daily driver. And uh, it's not intimidating at all, but it has the horsepower when you want it. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us here over at Lucor Automotive. We were able to diagnose and fix the vibration in the rear of the car with two new tires. We checked that line lock works, lowered the car one and a half to 1.8 inches, like we said earlier. And took it for a test drive to make sure that it hadn't sacrificed any of the ride quality of the car uh, in exchange for lowering it. And uh, since everything's okay, we're going to go ahead and ship the car out. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe.